Hi guys, I'm Share the Truth. I'm a poet and I love to analyze song lyrics. Today we're going to be doing a very exciting album. We are going to be reacting to Wise Blood's Titanic Rising. Now this is a highly requested album. A lot of you said that I would like the lyrics and that you'd love to see me analyze them. And that's why I'm here. And so I'm just excited to dive in. Let's just go ahead and listen to A Lot Gonna Change. Already getting some instrumentals. I'm a sucker for that. If I could go back to a time before now, before I ever fell down, go back to a time when I was just mm. a girl, when I because it's getting into something good but I definitely am getting themes of a loss of innocence and nostalgia to retrieve that innocence again uh, she seems to be reflecting back on a time where she was a little bit more relentless with her desires a little bit more fearless um, you know she didn't have she had no inhibition lack of inhibition um, that we all experience as a child and then we reflect back on that and we miss that and that's why children are so revered in society is because they haven't lost that fear and that uh, they don't think about am I going to fail or am I not going to fail they just do whatever they're going to do so she's really capturing that quite beautifully in this first stanza. It's kind of a crystalline voice. Um, I would describe Mitski as having a similar tone where it's 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 so it's so clear. You know, there's a clarity to it. Um, there's some interesting stuff happening on a production scale. Just really like um, where I'm being immersed in, if that makes sense. <laughs> lovely composition I feel like this is a almost a letter to herself and it seems like it's almost in the perspective of her becoming maybe towards the end of her life where she's realizing that having these fears and having these um inhibitions they are holding her back and she's telling her younger self or even telling herself in the perspective of an older version of herself to leave that all behind um, and, and it's, it's like take advantage of life because it's not going to last forever. Born in a century lost to memories, falling trees, get off your knees. No one can keep you down. If your friends and your family sadly don't stick around, it's high tide. You'll learn to get by. Yeah, it's, it's uh, giving advice to herself. I feel like in the song, um, Born to a century lost to memories. I'm not quite sure what that means. I am gonna click here and see what that means. Hmm. Is that saying, okay, so somebody somebody said here in, in Genius that it's a nostalgia for childlike innocence, which I did pick up in the beginning. So I'm guessing when she says born in a century lost to memories, it might be talking about when you're younger, you lose a lot of your memories as you, as a child. Yeah, this was a lovely song. I mean, it's, it's not something I necessarily would normally gravitate towards, but it's absolutely beautifully composed and it's definitely setting the scene for the entire album if this is kind of a taste of what is to come. So I'm just excited to see what's next. Andromeda? I don't know, I don't know this word. Looking 
all that's going on here um anyway i gotta find out what andromeda means because i think that's important <laughs> oh the nearest major galaxy to the milky way i'm not into um astronomy to that extent she could be talking about astronomy she could be talking about um, greek mythology i'm gonna go with she's talking about the galaxy um because she says andromeda's a big wide a big wide open galaxy nothing in it for me except my heart that's lazy okay so we're getting a little bit of uh coldness following some type of heartbreak heart pain heartache i mean there's definitely a numbness here there's definitely a there's nothing left for me type of thing like in this entire universe there's nothing left for me she's saying stop calling me it's time to let me be if you think you can save me i dare you to try so maybe that's a recognition of her flaws internally and in that she feels like she's a lost cause i'm getting that she feels like she's a lost cause and she feels like nobody can save her and she's given up she's given up in whatever way and i think that this could be definitely referring to a relationship um or it could be talking to the universe you know it could be hey universe stop sending me signs i'm a lost cause you know if i can't fix i can't fix myself i don't think it's that abstract i think it could definitely be talking about a relationship um where someone maybe wants to move past those flaws and she's she's numb because she's been hurt a million times you know like we all a lot of us have you know i'm not gonna group everybody in the same category but we get that numbness that darkness that inability to get close to people and i'm definitely feeling that in this particular song <laughs> she's now ready to give it a go she said crazy guy i think this is deep think it's meant to be that's beautiful more than anything i can think of i'm ready to try so she's overcome these walls this numbness that she's had to not fall in love with someone i like the structure of it i like how she's kind of talking to herself it's beautiful it's just beautiful with the instrumentation <laughs>
kind of Hawaiian about the instruments. I'm still a good man's daughter. That is, yeah, that's a powerful line because it's like, don't see me as just an object. You know, I'm somebody's daughter. I am I mean something to people. Remember that. I'm a human being. I have a heart. I love this line where she says, let me in if I break and be quiet if I shatter. Wow. That's just kind of a transparency there where she's saying, if you feel that I'm broken, I need you more. You know, I need you to let me in more if I start to shatter because this is a vulnerable place for me and I am, and she recognizes that she is going to have moments where she completely falls apart and what she needs in a partner is someone to just let her in if she starts to go to that point. And I love this part where she says, and be quiet if I shatter. Don't make fun of me. Don't, don't overly highlight it. Make me feel safe in my vulnerability. Make me feel safe in my pain. And that's, that is a powerful line. Let, and be quiet if I shatter. You know, someone that just accepts you and is soft when you begin to make the loudest noise, when you begin to show the loudest form of your pain and they're just quietly there for you can be some of the most powerful forms of express expressing love for someone. It says, love is calling. It's time to give it to you. Something you can hold on to. I dare you to try. That, that dare aspect of it. It's something that, um, you know, she referenced in the last song a lot about childlike nostalgia. And we all remember as a child being told, I dare you to do this, I dare you to do that. And that makes you want to do it more. And that's why it's so, it's fun that she says, I dare you to try because it's like this challenge, which makes it more enticing in a way. Next we have every day. Hmm. It's a cool piano. her voice is kind of nice and upfront which is so nice to hear I just absolutely love that it's something that's kind of been drifting away a bit baby it's getting late now fell so hard like I always do wow I'm so scared of being alone it's true it's true I see you every day but that's not enough I got this seeker running along a lonely line always trying to make my keeper mine it gets me every time but then again I might be falling down definitely uh, acknowledging that she's not comfortable being alone for sure I'm a little bit confused with some of the lyrics towards the end, but I think there's a chase happening here and there's maybe um, a lack of stability that she's feeling in whatever relationship she's in, where she feels like she has to constantly uh, make sure that she's safe in some way. That's what I'm kind of getting from the lyrics. <laughs> these vibes um selling off on my ships to nowhere got a lot of things to clear away got a lot of years of bad love to make okay it's similar to the last song similar theme of 
baggage, you know, just having all this baggage and carrying that into the next situation that you're in. And then having this recognition of this might, this baggage that I have actually might be holding me back, might actually be holding me back from something that's authentic and true because I have all of these uh, tendencies that I've carried from previous relationships. And so she's saying, I have these needs. I have this desire for safety. I'm afraid of being alone. And I think when she says I need a love every day, um, she could be recognizing that she needs something to show her that she's loved every day so that she can overcome that insecurity that she has on a regular basis. But let's keep listening. <laughs> this one the best because it's just making me kind of groove a little bit something I normally listen to it's different it's so different I'm gonna have to listen to this album again I absolutely will on my own time uh let's go back to this verse true love is making a comeback for only half of us the rest just feel bad huh doomed to wonder in the world's first rodeo you never let it show the other night I was at a party someone sincerely looked at me and said is this the end of all monogamy yeah, I mean, that's kind of a culture, a note on culture today. We're getting a lot of people that are abandoning this idea of monogamy. I wonder if she says for only half of us, the rest just feel bad. Is that talking about the 50% uh, marriage failure rate? Or is that just saying um, just a general number that half of us are in love and half are not? I need to believe. When fire leaves a girl too burned to try my life, living on the fault line. And at night, I just lay down and cry. The waters don't really go by me. Give me something I can see, something bigger and louder than the voices in me, something to believe. Yeah, she's reflecting on herself. She's reflecting on the mistakes that she may have made or maybe the negative thoughts that have held her back. Um, when fire leaves a girl, I mean, that's kind of referencing back to that first song, that loss of nostalgia, that loss of, uh, intensity for life, that zest that we have when we're a little bit younger and we lose that over time. We miss that. We're always trying to get that back. <laughs>
dropping the ball, I seem to carry so many. She's juggling a lot in her life. Um, the weight of it is getting to her. interesting here I seem to lose what I find please give me a sign soon really want to find out the truth yeah there's a desperation in this song that she's seeking some kind of sign that things are going to change things are going to get different and she's just seeking truth she's seeking answers and but there's there's uh there's some pain in that there's a desperation in that to find these answers and she's seemed like it seems like she's gotten close to there or she's had experiences where she thought she had found love or she thought she had found answers or she thought she had gotten better and then things kind of turned the other way Something to yeah she seems like she just wants hope that's what i'm actually now i'm thinking about it. yeah it seems like that's kind of the theme is like i just want hope i want something to tell me that to keep the light on inside of me, to keep the fire inside of me. Just give me something, give me a sign. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a very existential song. It's definitely, it's hinting on um, maybe looking up into the sky and seeking answers from a higher power, or seeking answers from the universe, whatever you believe in. But that's definitely going on in this song. <laughs> time with this album it's just like it's beautiful I can recognize that it's beautiful um you can clearly see that I'm not just I'm not jumping into a connection with all the songs but that doesn't mean that they're bad it's just something so beautifully produced about these songs and her voice sounds lovely um I just think it's the style for me that it's taking me a second to process that's that's the only thing I can say it's just taking me a second to process it I might not even get there um, but I am enjoying the process of just listening to something new and something that it's not really being heard right now. Yeah, this is so interesting. It's, 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 I feel like I feel a lot of water in this album. It's called Titanic Rising, which is, you know, I could see that because the Titanic sunk. So maybe this album is getting her out of this sunken place. And that theme has been evident throughout the entire album. But... I get a lot of water in this album. I feel like I'm in water. There's something water, ocean-like. There's a movement to it that's definitely being carried on with the instrumentals, especially in this particular track. because I just got I was I feel like I was zoning out I mean there's this thing going in the background over and over and over again and it's it's giving me that same sensation I get when I listen to binaural beats and I think that in this particular song she is trying to capture that sensation of love this is how it feels to be in love this is life from above there's no books anymore I'm bound to that summer big boxes off Big box office hit, making love to a counterfeit. Huh, I'm thinking making love to a counterfeit is a double meaning. Um, maybe she has, she's thinking about counterfeit movie tickets, but she's also talking about a counterfeit love, an artificial love, and she's making out with this artificial um, 
love that's not real that's not authentic <laughs> This is about movies. Mm. I love where your voice is getting really nice and dark here. Um, I think she's saying, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory here, but she's saying the meaning of life doesn't seem to shine like that on that screen. Yeah, I mean, life is not like the movies. It's a, it's an interesting way. And that's what I like about the writing in this particular song is, and some of the songs previously in this album is she's talking about very common themes that we've heard before. Life is not a movie. We've heard that theme before and it's worded in a way that captivates us. It makes us think that we're hearing um, something completely different and in a way that we are because we're hearing it from a different perspective, from a different mindset and with different writing. You know, she's not just saying life is not a movie. She's saying the meaning of life doesn't seem to shine like that screen. The movies are either an escape from reality or they're a reflection of our own reality. And that's why we love the movies so much and we take so much from them because they, they do something to us. They do something for each of us and every single one of us go to a movie for a different reason. But the reason we gravitate towards movies have a lot to do with our own personal lives. I mean, some people go to movies to escape things and some people go to movies to glamorize a life that they do not have and they seek that life through the screen. A lot of different things are going on in the screen. These darker tones. I love the movies. I mean, the movies that we watch as children, they build who we are as adults. I mean, nobody wants to talk about how impactful movies are. I mean, there's movies that have changed my life. It's just like a book. There's stories that have changed my life, that have changed my outlook on things. And there's stories that that have glamorized life in a way where it's like, I'm never going to achieve that in my own reality. And that can be a little bit painful but at the same time there's something so great about that right to take us away from our world and whether that results in good or bad there's something so addictive about being able to go to the theater and have that escape um, as someone that's done a lot of acting in the past I, I know that that feeling I get when I watch a movie and you just you get lost for two hours and that can either change your life or just take you away from your life, which is both great in itself. So I love that this, out, this song is about an ode to movies. I think that's absolutely great. <laughs> Next we have Mirror Forever. Hmm. I 
was kind of relaxing while listening to those. Look at the lyrics though. I do like the way that she started off where no one's gonna give you a trophy for all the pain and the things you've been through. I mean, that's so true. It's, we don't get any medals for our pain or whatever hills we've had to climb. You know, we just have to get through them. Nobody gives us a pat on the back for getting through shit. You know, that's just reality and that sucks. Nobody even knows, she even says, nobody knows but you. You know, nobody, unless you tell somebody, nobody knows what's really going on with you or how things are really affecting you. harmonies going on in this song gorgeous oh, you're a demon with a scary picture I'm a dreamer and you're a tiger she has this uh, dream of this relationship um you're I'm a dreamer and you're a tiger you're 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 a tiger you're the person that is able to hurt me the person that's able to crush my dreams um got a feeling our romance doesn't stand a chance you know you have something soft or something that's very uh, it's like tiger-like. It's very ag aggressive. It's courageous. It's it's bold. Yeah, she says you're the Garden of Eden. There was so much abundance, and then it kind of just dwindled, and the reality started to sit in. You lift me up just to let me fall hard. I mean, this person seems to be somebody that that lifted her up, made her feel good, and then in the end, they ended up not being what they, what she thought. Uh, can't stand to be your second best. Maybe there's somebody else in the picture that they like more than her and she's getting her heart broken. I just gotta listen to it again. I gotta re. Is it just me? Did y'all have to listen to this a few times to really click it? It's different. Hey, voice is great. I like that. In this situation, circumstance. Wow, I like that lyric. But the timing spent in this situation, circumstance. The timing spent in this situation circumstance. Situation circumstance. It's rhythm. It's kind of rhythm, rhythm to it. aspect to this lover that she knows that she can't resist I'll see you around the next time you call it's like I know I'm gonna give in in some ways how I'm interpreting it 
Um, but she says, oh, baby, take a look in the mirror. I think there's, maybe she wants this person to see themselves for what they are, what they're doing. Wild time. she's doing these lyrics look around there's nothing left to keep by the bottles that broke you from the solace you seek beautiful metaphor she's comparing the pain and kind of like a, a bottle bottles that broke you there's nothing there's no point of picking up those pieces okay so i think what she's saying is don't cling on to what has hurt you don't cling on to those those things that have hurt you. Don't try to pick up those things. Sometimes we get attached to our trauma, our pain, our heartbreak. It becomes part of our identity. And I feel like she's saying there's nothing left to keep of that. You gotta let it go. Instrumentally. time to be alive i think this is just recognizing that life is difficult we're all going through so much right now we're, there's just a million things going on everybody's trying everyone's trying to get through things i think the one thing i'll note about her writing is she's not so specific on having every line rhyme she has certain sections that rhyme but it's really what she does with her voice is really what makes the the lyrics smoothly go together um there are sections that do rhyme but it's not it's not so set in stone, you know? She she has a little bit of a freedom with her writing. It's definitely free written, but with certain structural elements to it. Ooh. I like that part. changes make you more holy and true it's instead of making these changes defeat you make them make you a greater make you make you make make changes make you truer make you more authentic make you a stronger person not even just stronger but rise above it all Otherwise, it just made it complicated. oh my god i love that fantastic absolutely i mean even if i don't click with every song in this album i will not deny for a second in my life that this girl cannot sing i mean she has a freaking angelic voice i love that part where she goes one in all that section that's so stunning <laughs> song i think this might be another highlight for me there's something about it that's magical it's just taking me into another world and it's like i have to listen to it again for sure but there's something magical about it i like this one I think the 
one thing I'll note about her writing throughout the entire album. She's talking about herself, but she's also really intentional in sending out a greater message until the until the entire world, until entire to the entire society. I feel like she's trying to speak to people. She's trying to send a message to people to almost humanity really on how we're processing pain, how we're handling pain, um, how we're navigating the constant changes that are happening. And I think, you know, this is something that's extremely relatable and it's something that I think it's very observant. I think she's she may have taken a lot of time analyzing how people handle things, how people navigate relationships. I don't think she's just talking about herself. I think she's sending a message to humanity to groups of people. I'm getting this kind of expansive vibe from the lyrics. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is a, I'm gonna chill out in my bed and put this song on and just vibe out. I'll see you in six minutes. Like, I'm zoning out right now. Oh, come through. Angelic, it's angelic. It's, it has to be a single, right? No, this might be the highlight, of, one of the highlights of the album. I love this. definitely melting into the song but like I said I think it's a it's a message to society on how to navigate pain and it is just it's an observation piece she's speaking definitely in second person <laughs> wild time to be alive yeah it's, it's 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 that's something that she said previously it's like just observing all these rapid changes in society and how it's causing a lot of chaos it's causing a lot of emotional fragility and just having somebody say that and acknowledge that can be powerful in itself picture me better she said because I was paying attention to her voice picture me better I finally found the time to write you this letter to the stars and moon for you and it's coming back soon don't need no money when you're around and you're making me act funny can't help to smile with those eyes that shine on me if only you could see it's a love song that's what it sounds like it's like you're making me feel different you're making me feel funny can't help to smile with those eyes that shine on me. We all can relate to that. Somebody that has these beautiful eyes that make us feel. People that make you feel can change you. It's intangible, it's visceral, it's beautiful. we finally found a winter for your sweater it's like you can't wear a sweater unless it's cold en enough outside to wear one so I guess when it's talking about emotions and stuff it's like it's making me think man picture us better we finally found a winter for your sweater so there's a compatibility there I guess if you think about a sweater being belongs in colder weather it's like if you find someone maybe their their pain matches your pain so you finally have a match for each other i think that's kind of where she's going with that since you less left i've grown so much she's she's gonna learn something from an experience that she's had if I seen you just 
tell you i'm very captivated by this album it's like it takes me out of my comfort zone but i'm here for it right i like the writing on this song we finally found a winter for your sweater that might be one of my favorite lyrics i gotta figure out what meaning i have for that there's definitely some existentialism happening here um i think it's a reflection on self it might even just be a conclusion to the album where it's like we finally have found a conclusion to this pain to this um heartache to these different types of situations i've been in where i'm finally um aware of things you know i finally figure out what to do with my pain what to do with my coldness um and balance that with my warmth if we're talking about winter and the sweater waiting for the call from beyond waiting for something with meaning to come through soon wow Wow, so she's searching for something bigger. She's search, searching for purpose, I feel like, in this song. And uh, in the pre-chorus, she says, if I could have seen you just once more and tell you how much you're adored, there's no point anymore. She's felt like she's lost her chance. Maybe she doesn't have the opportunity to say what she wanted to say to this person. Maybe they're not around anymore. And then she says, waiting for the call from beyond. It's like she's waiting for this message, this symbol, this something, this sign for what direction, what path, what meaning that she has in life. So it's very, very uh, outside of body and I'm sure we can all relate to that. Next we have Nearer to Thee. That's the last track. I gotta say I'm a sucker for classical music. I will just put on classical music and melt. Come on. Ooh. Ooh, this is pretty. more songs I don't see them it must be on a deluxe album or something oh there's a 2021 oh okay this must have just came out I'm confused <laughs> there's a song called Titanic Risen okay so the album is called Titanic Rising and this song is called Titanic Risen so the Titanic was rising up from the uh, bottom of the ocean and now we've reached the top so if I were to make a guess I'm gonna guess that this is possibly her reaching some resolution of sort like she's overcome something she's finally gotten out of that sunken place She knows how to melt you into a song. Thank you. 
Yeah, this definitely has similar lyrics to, I think it was the, the title, maybe it was the title track. Yeah, it was in Andromeda, she said that. Nothing in it except a heart that's lazy. And in this song, she says, make me feel my love is lazy. So it's carrying that on. Mean a chance. You know I want to become you was a line that stuck out to me. She wants to emulate this person or she has some kind of um she sees them as above her in some way. I definitely got that from the song. I, I make me feel like my love is lazy. Like my love is not enough or my love isn't is lackluster in some way. Um she doesn't feel like enough or she feels like what she's giving isn't satisfying or isn't to the level that this person or guy or whatever desires. Victims, we all become the victims of love-like symptoms. I like that. That rhyme is, is lovely. What it really is a question, what you really are, impressions, just wonderful illusions, how long can confusion really last for? I like that, how long can confusion really last for? Like eventually you're going to reach clarity and at some point. And she says, really last, really last, really last. I feel like she's trying to make a point. Like, it's not going to last forever. The state of confusion you're in, it's just part of the process. And I feel like this is one of those also, another one of those songs where she's speaking to us personally from her experience. And I think that's really beautiful. Wow, I feel like I had quite the experience with this one. I'm going to need more time with it for sure. But it was so different. And her voice is absolutely stunning. So anybody that recommended her for her voice, Absolutely. I mean, she has a great voice. I think it was so clean and the strings and the instrumentation for me was standout for sure. I mean, it really took you through this trance of sorts. Um, I think what's not clicking with me is it's not easily digestible. You know, it's not an easily digestible album. There's no hook. You know, there's nothing that's marketable this is not a marketable album it's not trying to be anything it is what it is it's authentic to her um but it's not catering to something that was that, that would necessarily cater to the masses so for me i love all types of music that it kind of caught me off guard but i think it's in a good way like but there's some elements to this album that really captivated me like i can't explain it there's something so confusingly delightful about this album i can't there's just it's like mixing different genres what she did with the production it's something kind of new to me it's it really is it's something kind of new to me um i definitely hear influences but there's something unique about it right so let me know what you guys thought did it take you a little while to kind of adjust and process the album or did you like it right away but I absolutely loved listening to it and uh, I can't wait to listen to what else you guys have recommended.